Today is car washing day. I washed a car probably about two weeks ago, and I have been using all the last coat products, uh, including the spray and soap. Uh, that is the products that I use. As you notice, I have a, a Canon. Um, I acquired that from a different source than the last coat, which is working fine. It's for my power washer. Um, this is the car I'm getting ready to clean. Um, as you can see from this camera, it does not look that dirty, uh, but it has been driven in the rain, the weather, and such like that for the last week, week and a half or so. And if you get a closer look, you can see the collection of dirt and such on the backside. Uh, guarantee that when I do go to wash this, um, since the car has been treated, it will come off as a breeze. Um, but anyway, I wanted to film this so you can see how the product has been working since I've been using it for a while, about three months now. Started in the winter time. I have done a lot of washing and a lot of care for the car to keep it clean. That's just the way I am. And most of you who are gonna be watching this video will probably be doing the same thing because you're one of those car washing kind of people. Anyway, so I will go ahead and get started with the process and I'll get back into washing. Um, I use warm water from the tap. Now, the other thing is what I'll do is I'll, after I prepare my soap over here, is I'll spray down the entire car, top to bottom, get all the hard sediment off as I possibly can. Um, in this case, since I did say earlier that this car has been treated very well, most of the sediment and dirt will wash right off. What I use the gloves for is basically the bottom area of the car where the hard soil is. Now I'll do the entire bottom, the skirting around the wheel wells, and uh, continually doing it all the way around the car, both sides. Following that, doing the skirt area, I will open up the doors and do the jams on the inside. I keep them clean as well, including inside the gas cap. A lot of neglect there. I see many people will wash their cars. They'll look nice until you open the door. And then you can see everything that has built up over time because it never gets washed. So that will be my only time I should have to use any rags on this car. And I just do that because I like it extra special clean. Not only that, I will also do the inside of the lift gate as well with my hand gloves all the way around, including the outside. Here's the last coat of soap. And I'll take this over to my start. I don't need much uh, because this, as you know, is just for the skirting area. Um, and following, which I failed to say a moment ago, after I do the skirting area, I'll use the same gloves and soap out of this container to then wash the wheels. That's the only other uh, thing I'll use those rags for. Now, when if I do need to do a hand wash on the entire car, um, I will clean out this bucket with fresh soap and then use my hand mitts for the rest of the car after I completed the detail work that I just mentioned. Okay, here's my prepared soap with my gloves and ready to go. And of course I am using the last coat so uh, here I just sprayed it off. Uh, I want to show you, you saw it before, and hopefully this camera can show you the lighting in the garage. It's not that great, but I can tell you there is no more dirt, hard dirt that you can see on this car just from spraying it off. Granted, it is white. I understand it does cover up that uh, fact that darker cars will probably display a little bit more if there is any contaminants or residue that is still on it. But with my eyes, the closest I can see, there is none. So this will make the washing time so much quicker than it used to be. Um, I can tell you the cars I had in the past before using this product, there would be residue on there. I am certain for that. Um, I also pre-washed this or pre-rinsed the side. And even down here in the lower areas where you usually get built up that's really sticky, is not there. I didn't wash here yet, 
you can still see where there is sediment. That will be gone when I finish rinsing out over completely. All right, take note to this. We'll check this out in a minute. There's a bug smudge. Let's rinse that and see if that goes away after using the last coat. This will be a nice little test. I haven't tried this before, or maybe I have and just forgotten, but let's find out what happens. Obviously that's a little bit more than it uh, will need um, to be rubbed a little bit with a with a cloth. But furthermore, I know once I touch it, it's going to come right off. And uh, here's a sediment here. two gloves. First, next will be inside. I do the front first for this reason. I can get in here you can see it. Just a quick over. And now for the other door. All the way up to the rubber gasket. Um, anything inside the rubber gasket, of course, you want to try to stay somewhat dry. Of course, when you're all done, you'll expect some of it to get wet. That's what the towels are for. Okay, I have finished and I of uh, the outside skirting area and also the door jams member. I mentioned getting the inside track of the gate of the back too. It helps a lot to help keep it clean, hit it every time. So finally, um, since all that is done, I don't bother, I used to rinse the soap off immediately, um, but I've noticed since the soap is so good, you don't have to be concerned about drying and streaking um, that quick. It does not hard attach to the vehicle. So long as you're not washing in the bright sunshine, either way, I don't suggest washing in the sun. If you do, you gotta be quick and wash in smaller sections. Being in the garage, how I have it set up, I think is perfect. So if you have the ability to set your garage up like mine with the power washer, I'll tell you really, water does get on things, but it's such a small amount. I haven't had any problems with that. Um, thus far and I've been doing this for a long time in the garage and so I will show you my wheel cleaning process there is an inside part of the wheel I can't get to it all uh, one of the things I shop for when I buy cars is how much space between the spokes I do like some of those fancy wheels with a lot of spokes but I tell you washing them is is not fun at all um, so I rather have bigger spaces between the spokes to get my hands in there. They make other brushes and devices to help get a reach around, but I, I don't like using bristles so much, even though they make some nice soft ones out there. 
I'm sure there's brushes out there that are perfect for this. I still don't prefer them. Uh, they leave brush marks uh, a lot of times. So anyway, the wheel, I basically go around each side using the last coat, so it helps to keep them nice and clean and shiny as well. Of course, it's like the rest of the car. But each one, and I just run around. Now, the inside, I just reach in as far as I can to get it on the back. At least whatever is in sight, you can see is clean. Um, many wheels on the inside are ignored. Again, I'm particular like that. I notice those things because I do a lot of car washing. The wheels are painted, and even this brushed aluminum look on top, I am sure has some sort of clear, clear coat or some kind of treatment on it, which helps keep it from oxidizing or keeping it shiny or whatever that may be. Those harsh cleaners that you can get, brake clean, uh, stuff that cleans the, uh, the brake dust. Oh yeah, it works, it makes it nice and clean, but I suspect they're also eating away protective coatings and paint on the wheels. I don't suggest using them. So just be Larry if you're using that high emulsions type wheel cleaner. Over time, it could make the paint look cloudy or cause the clear coat or whatever coating is on the wheel to peel off. So if that's something you didn't know, at least you got a tip from me. Okay, um, I've finished the uh, pre-wash underskirt wheels and everything, and now it's ready for the uh, soap cannon. This is a soap cannon I bought, I hate to say it, my favorite store, Walmart. Um, I think it was just like $24 or something like that. Um, I'm not trying to, I, I don't know how much better the one that you can get off the Last Coat website is, but this one operates fine as you can see. Um, it is uh, the ratio in it, I can't remember exactly. I already have some in there, but I'm going to top it off. That's probably more than an ounce, but that doesn't have to be perfect. Try not to get it to close up too much. There, close enough. Give it a little bit of shake. Don't want it to froth up, just want to mix it around a little bit. And now our water cannon is ready to used. As you can see, soap pop coverage is pretty good. <laughs> this does have an adjustment where you can more or less froth or more or less soap. <laughs> I like it that whole hour. coat the car pretty excessively. I probably don't need to use this much, uh, but I like it. And so does the last coat. It means I gotta buy more. Okay, I'll let that soak in a while. That's after the water cannon. As you can see, it already has uh, kind of thinned out quite a bit. Looks like I missed a spot there, but there's enough soap all over the car where I'll spread it around and, and get coverage. At this point is when I switch over to my hand rags. And uh, since the car is coated so well with the last coat, washing will be a breeze. Um, basically, just a light, hardly any pressure. Just touch it with your uh, high fiber large pill wash rags. Um, I used a blue in my older one. I'll just throw it in a bucket. Now that that is clean. The only thing I don't have, which I will get one of these days, is a sediment trap. Um, that's the little round thing that goes in the bottom of the bucket that allows the sediment to walk out, uh, just to fall out underneath where your rags would be. But the thing of it is, I don't have much sediment, so I've been complacent with what I've been doing. 
So basically now it's just time to start hand washing. So very light, very quick, and it'll take a very little time. All right, I completely washed the car. Of course, you watch me do it in time lapse. I think that took me less than five minutes. Less than five minutes, and I touched this entire car. Let's go back to that mirror. Remember that splatter? All right, normally I know, back in the day, before I started using the last coat, I would have to probably put quite a bit of elbow grease. Two wipes, no pressure, gone. So something to think about. Bug season is coming, so I can't wait to see how it works when I get splatter bugs on the front. Hopefully, last coat will have the hydrophobic properties to make that as simple as it was on that mirror with that bug splatter or whatever it was, but it didn't take much. So now it's time for rinsing, and I won't let you go through all that process. So I'll get back to you when that is all done. All right, we are completely rinsed. And uh, it's perfect. Uh, the water, all right, this car is fairly new. I don't know how the water would be beating if I didn't use the last coat, uh, but it's, it beats substantially. Um, I do see some sheeting, uh, probably where, in fact, the sheeting is where the road spray is. The pattern is very obvious. So that kind of tells you the contaminants from driving in the rain will cause the last coat to wear off faster. Um, but that is one of the disclosures that they say your driving conditions in the area that you live in will give you an indicator of how long a coating will last. Um, so you can see, uh, especially on the front door, you can see where the water is sheeting there a few inches below the door handle into the wheel well. So these areas I will treat more often and then of course the passenger door as well. But if you look above it, you can see the repelling water as it's beating up does not want to stay. Um, the back is pretty good. It's bubbling up pretty good. or And everything else is uh, pretty nice. And likewise, on this side, I can see where it sheets more. The light's not giving you, well, you see that line right there? That's from road spray. I'm driving the car in the rain in the sediment. We're coming out of winter time, so there's been a lot of things. Salt, rock. Uh, you name it, whatever I need to put on the roads during the wintertime. So shortly that will end, and during the spring and summer months, I am sure the last coat applique will last a lot longer, and I'll be looking forward to that. If you haven't noticed, I use two of everything, one for the left, one for the right hand. These are the super Zorb uh, sort of synthetic camus. It works great. Um, it absorbs a lot of the water. This is my pre-dry, and I dry in sections. And uh, along, with, <laughs> along with that, I use a microfiber towel. I'm not sure the pill of this. It's two-sided. It's got a fine side and, a, as you can see, a higher pill side. Whatever these were, I know I got them at Walmart. They're great. I follow with that. And again, as you know, I have two, one, two. So drying, and I'll start on the hood just so I can use the video. Normally I go top down and do the black top and then the glass first because that's more susceptible to spotting. Um, not that it will spot because I'm in a garage and I don't have to worry about quick dry and it's the water that spots because I got a high amounts of lime in my water which leaves those white rings as if you let it dry but essentially it's one or two wipes of this and then I'll follow with a drying towel very light very easy try to leave no streaks 
Um, it does cloud a little. Clouding's fine. Streaking is not. Because when a streak dries, that's when you see the streaks. All right, the car is all dry. It is basically ready to go. I do have drips I need to attend to. Um, the doors are all open. I still have the door jams to dry. Um, that needs attention uh, because uh, water spots again. Uh, and if you drive drive the car right after you wash it, these water spots will drip out, and then the dust from driving will cause it to stick like glue. So everything is pretty much done. There is one spot I did notice in the front I want to tend to. I believe it's just a hard bug. It might be tar. Uh, where did it go? Uh, right there below the light. Okay, you're wondering what's next. So we talked about that smudge. I found another one. It looks like a genuine, wonderful tar splatter from the road, something we all got to uh, deal with all the time. So anyway, this is a clay bar. This is a Meguiar's brand clay bar, which I've been using for a while. Soon I'll need to retire it. So this is what we're going to use to uh, remove the sediments. I ha was using the last coat as a uh, lubricant for the, the clay bar. I decided to save that for its special needs that it's, re that it's uh, designed for. So I went ahead and got out, went out to the store and got some uh, quick detailer. And the ultimate, of course, uh, detailer from the local auto store. Um, that's going to be the lubricant for the clay bar. So we'll start with that spot. I videoed earlier, uh, which is right there under the light. I don't think, yes, you can see it. It's right there underneath the light. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and spray this quick detailer on the area. And then simply put, I'll massage. I have been massaging this clay bar. You just rub it away and it's gone. And once you do that, Just wipe off the area clean using the traditional hashtag method. I do say that McGuire's does have a scent. Last coat, if you want to add a little scent to your stuff, that would be a great selling point. It doesn't stink, but this McGuire's stuff smells like I want to drink it. All right, let's go to that spot in the back, that tar spot. On the back lift gate, of course, that's where they always are. Let me figure out where I saw it. There it is. Uh, boy, it might be flooded with the light now that I got the garage door open. I can't see it on the video, can you? There it is, right there. Okay, again, same process. Lubrication. And it's gone uh, and then of course when you do this the surface becomes extremely smooth and then it's ready for more last coat and that's gone 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 now let's take a another inspection around the car to see if oh, there's another one actually there's a few more right there I don't know if you can see it but I'll get it very small this one's a little more stubborn. Again, I'm using hashtag strokes up and down, left and right, north, south, east, west. And that's gone. I see something else right there. I see a few more, but I'm not going to get into all of them right now. I'm using a different microfiber towel this time. I like these. <laughs> Another wonderful Walmart find. Um, again, it has two different kind of sides. It feels real nice. Pretty absorbent. Uh, very soft. And uh, it's good. So if you recognize it, don't know how much they were. But uh, these are good. All right, that's all for now.
Okay, the reason why I came over here is because this was the area through here that the road spray seemed to have prematurely um, lost the coverage of the last coat. So I'm going to reapply in this specific area just to get the coverage back that I prefer to have. So we're going to use some of the same rags. So I'll spray the area and then just Again, using the hashtag, hashtag method, just apply it liberally. A second, and then wipe it off. I still see some more. Tar spots. Well, I'm gonna let it go for now. There, now that's nice, fresh, nice and fresh protection, and it's shiny. Using terry cloth and that same towel to buff it out. Looks great. Not terry cloth, microfiber, excuse me. I wouldn't use terry cloth. Not anymore anyway. Terry cloth leaves too much. I will I'll call it dust, but fibers from it streaks and smudges more so than microfiber. The only argument I have with microfiber sometimes you get microfibers stuck to the paint but if you have microfibers sticking to the paint that means you haven't been using last coat. <laughs> 